Thank you for joining us for yet another episode of Long Story Short. Now, whether you are a small business owner now, a future small business owner, or a lover of small businesses, you're going to totally enjoy today's episode. So each week we talk about different small business owners of a field that they are experts in. And today's topic is building your visual identity as a business. And we've got two guests who I'm so excited for you to meet. We've got co-founder and chief strategy officer of Happy Box, Hannah Redmond, and co-founder and chief creative officer of Happy Box, Ariel Redmond. And yes, they are sisters. <laughs> Hi. Hey, thanks for having us. Of course. Okay, so give us a quick explanation of what Happy Box is as a company, and then we're going to get into learning all about visual identity. Yeah, so Happy Box is a build your own care package platform. So we're fully e-commerce and our customers go on our website, they pick a box design, they fill it with tons of different gifts. We have hundreds to choose from. Um, they pick a card, they write a note, and then our team literally handwrites their note, um, packs up their box and ships it right to the recipient's door. So basically it's like the modern day gift basket. Okay, but everyone needs to know how you guys started as a company because I think that's so important you what your brand is. Yeah, that's true. So Ariel, when we were in college, my sister mm -hmm. got dumped right around Valentine's Day. <laughs> and I was living states apart. And I wanted to send her something super fun, not your traditional kind of like gift basket with pears and nuts. I didn't want to send her flowers. Nothing felt appropriate. I wanted to send her fun chocolate, like snarky items, a voodoo doll, just fun things that would make her smile. Um, so I had to run around to seven stores and built my own care package, sent it to her. She loved it. And I thought, you know, how does this not exist? I mean, you can customize a car online, but you can't customize a care package. So years later, after, a, you know, a stint in advertising and marketing ourselves, we decided to start the business. And here we are now. So you guys are amazing when it comes to like, I've gotten a happy box before and it's just mm -hmm. so pretty and fun and vibrant. And we're going to get all into how you guys created that. But for people who are joining us right now, I'm like, what, but what is visual identity for a brand? Can you explain that to us? Yeah. So visual identity really can permeate your entire brand from your logo. It's really, we like to say it's everything that you can see. Um, and it really should just transcend kind of anything graphic um, and really be what your business is about. So for us, we're not just about bright colors. For us, it's about being happy and having an emotional response to the brand. So for us, you know, that just means, you know, we I, ideally we want someone to like see something on the street, make them feel happy and think of us. That's our kind of goal. I like that. So every company obviously has their own visual identity. Did you guys have to sit down and like actually build that out as a business? Like, this is what we want people to feel when they see X, Y, Z. Is that something you actually have to sit down and do? Yes. <laughs> yes, you absolutely have to do that. Um, I'm super lucky um, that my background is in uh, graphic design. I studied at Parsons School of Design um, and I've worked on some major, major brands. I've built plenty of style guides in my life. Um, so yeah, it's really about building the kind of, you know, bunch of colors that you feel really resonate will will resonate with your brand and your identity um, and then setting up the rules and then really breaking them. I think that's like <laughs> the most fun part about being a designer is you set the system, um, you, you know, you play within that system as much as you can and then you break the rules, which is kind of where all the fun begins. Well, yeah, and it's it's fun because you can kind of um, decide like there are colors we love that we wouldn't necessarily use on Happy Box because they're not within our kind of style guide. So we we make these decisions seasonally on what drives emotion during the holidays, right? Like and and what what makes you feel happy, like whether it's imagery, um, color, uh, and so we we do a lot of work sitting and thinking about that as we refresh kind of all of our marketing. So you bring up color. I know color is a huge part of brands, right? There are so many brands that we see a certain color and we just automatically think of a specific brand like the tiffany box right we know that color so is it important for a brand to own a color but you guys also just said you switch around the holiday so explain how that works as a brand when that's so visual for people yeah so it's definitely not about one color it's not i mean tiffany's is a is a perfect example of like the most identifiable brand Possible, iconic but it's also how old is tiffany's like yeah. 100 years old <laughs> so they've had you know they've had a lot of time to build their brand i'm sure they went through a, a couple shades of teal um i think every brand starts with something right they start with a, one color a system of colors and then you kind of start to build and see you know i can flex the system in this way which is great and you should you should 
definitely not feel limited to your system. You should feel that you have enough room to play and that it can expand through the holidays. And, and you really do have to think big picture throughout the year, marketing, photography, really everything you're going to do um, and create a system that allows you to be flexible and allows you to kind of play. So for us, what that means is, you know, fun colors. And that's like the best way to describe mm -hmm. it because there is no one fun color, right? So you can pair colors together and create something beautiful. We feel like we have a nice little system that we've created and we kind of stay inside the lines, but then there's some times where we just completely break it when there's a seasonal moment, Valentine's day is red and pink. And we, right. you know, we just like love to kind of break everything and, and it helps everything stay really fresh. And I think if you, oh, go ahead. I was just saying, but you're still following your visual identity as a brand just because you're breaking that rule. Yeah. So, so the color is less important. This is going to sound crazy. And like, again, it's like <laughs> my background of just like design, but you create a system that feels in line with itself. It doesn't have to be a specific set of colors. It is about the feeling that you get from those colors. So it's not a specific green and a specific pink. It's just how they work together. And then you can always throw in a pop of orange if that kind of makes sense. Yes. I know you're going to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say also, I mean, think about it, right? It's not just the color surrounding everything in your brand and it's not in every marketing material that everything has to be exactly the same. However, consistency matters. And that's where also your logo comes in, which is part of your visual identity. So I think um, having a consistent logo, I think we talk about it all the time that a lot of small businesses struggle with their perfect first logo and they'll, they'll right. evolve it. And the problem is, and we've been lucky enough to work on some really big brands in our previous careers and they are so consistent. They yes. use those logos over and over again to get that Tiffany color and logo and, you know, the, these certain brands, they have used it like nonstop for years. And so as a small business, it is like yeah. crucial to be consistent with your logo on everything you do. I, I would recommend too, if you're going back to your colors, if you're just starting out, have a set of primary colors and then accent colors that you want to throw in and test. And then your brand will naturally evolve. You'll naturally start to gravitate towards colors that you feel really work with your system. And then it'll kind of just, it'll work itself out. So don't be too afraid to have too many colors or, you know, too little, just kind of start. And then you can, you can kind of go from there. Okay, that makes my heart happy. Cause I have a problem sometimes, but, but I love all these colors. With something that I'm on, and what do I do? So, okay. Good to know. And anyone who's watching live right now, I know that some questions are starting to roll in. We will get to a Q and a, so feel free to drop any questions for Hannah or Ariel in the chat. We'll get to them in a little bit, but I do know that you guys are Vistaprint customers. And I know Vistaprint has been a part of your journey as a business from the beginning. So share what you have used from Vistaprint as small business owners. Yeah, we've done a ton with Vistaprint actually. Um, when we started, we were kind of testing the business idea at like, you know, pop-up events and stuff. So our first happy box sign ever was made with Vistaprint. Um, all of our business cards are still made with Vistaprint. Um, we do a lot of custom marketing material, custom cards for our customers um, all through Vistaprint. So we're, you know, fueled by Vistaprint, I would say. That's awesome. That is so cool. Which by the way, not a requirement for this podcast, but I'm yeah. when you guys were like, what? We love them. So <laughs> it was perfect. And obviously they were a huge part of your visual identity because you were able to bring it to life for the first time and have that signage. So that was, that's gotta be really cool now, full circle. Here we are. Yeah, but really. when a, a small business sits down and they're like, all right, we need to build our visual identity. Mm -hmm. What do they need to take into account? in that moment when they're sitting down on a whiteboard or whatever they're doing, what do they need to take into account to actually build the visual identity? So I think you have to start with what your brand really stands for. And uh, like for, for us, for happy box, it really is about the moment that some, you know, that someone's thinking about you, that you receive something in the mail and it just makes you happy because someone thought of you, someone thought of you enough to send you something. And that is a very beautiful thing to know that someone's out there. So for us, it's all about the emotion. It really is. We spark an emotion in our customers and, and, you know, we see the notes people write and it is the most beautiful thing that you could, you, I mean, people are really nice. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think when you're sitting down and really thinking about it, I would really have some emotional words that, that really you feel, um, kind of, you know, identify your brand. And then I think from there, the color palette can come. I think logo is super crucial. Like kind of said before, it's really important to keep that consistent. Um, you can change it a little bit as you go, but it really is kind of important to make sure that you 
put all your, you know, eggs in your basket, I guess, and, and make sure that you feel really comfortable with the logo. Um, but really creating that emotional response. And then all the colors, like if you're looking at happy and looking at, you know, you're not really picking gray as a color. So the, they kind of fall out of out of that emotional response that you want your customers to, to receive. I think also your demographic, like who are you targeting? So for us, um, largely our consumer is millennial women, right? So we look a lot ahead at trends. Like what are the trends? What's the Pantone color of the year? Like what are the fashion trends, right? Like in our demographic. So we're looking at that to understand how we should evolve. And then also for our corporate customers, because we do have a corporate line of business where we do corporate gifts, um, we tend to go a little bit more muted because we know that the middle manager who maybe isn't the millennial woman still you know, needs to be needs to have a connection with our brand in some way, needs to find it attractive enough for them to click um, on our website or click on the link. So um, we do kind of like stray a little bit um, still within our brand kind of guidelines, but you know, we'll, we'll tweak it based on the demographic as well. And as you're watching right now, head over to happy box on Instagram or happyboxstore.com So you can physically see what Hannah and Erica are talking about because you will be like, Oh, this is fun when you get to their website because it is super bright. It does make you feel happy. So um, that's something cool to check out. And we are going to get into this week's one minute wisdom in a bit. But before we do that, when it comes to social media, what is your approach on visual branding in that world? Is it different than when you're doing your website or your specific boxes or is it the same across the board? Yeah, so social media is interesting, like all other marketing channels, and it's, it's an extension of your brand, right? So you do have to keep in mind the brand colors that you've decided on your logo, there's certain like look and feel elements that you should that should transfer over to all of your marketing, right? That, that's just important in, in, you know, in the fact that you need to be consistent to drive that recognition of your brand. Um, but I think small business owners, they get so caught up in the perfect aesthetic on social media and so trying to perfectly curate and Photoshop every single post. And I think what's kind of fascinating about social media is the more organic, the more user generated content looks, it tends to perform better. So I think you can loosen the grip a little bit and let maybe your fans do the talking, maybe look at what your customers are saying about your brand and get creative there while still extending the reach, you know, with the branding you like, but but being a little bit more lax and um, a little bit more organic on social. I think something too to keep in mind is no one is really looking at your entire Instagram page as a whole and looking at the feed or looking at your entire page and seeing, oh, it's like beautifully curated. Really, they're seeing this hopefully organically, like really hopefully, or even if you have an ad, like maybe they'll they'll see something, you know, in their feed. Um, but really, it's important to know that you know, as a small business owner, uh, and if you're side hustling it like we did for yeah. a, a really long time, <laughs> um, you don't have a lot of time. You don't have a lot of time to spend, and it really is. While your visual identity definitely, like it's you know, it's on social, it's on your website, it's on, but there are so many more important and more valuable, maybe to you as a business owner, places for you to kind of put your time, if that makes sense. <laughs> and I'm loving seeing uh, some messages pop up. I saw one came from Katie that was like, I got a happy box and I loved it. So that is awesome. We've got happy box fans in here. Okay, Katie. <laughs> take a quick one minute break. We're going to get this week's one minute wisdom from Emily, the founder of Art of Sucra. Hi there, I'm Emily, the founder of Art of Sucra, a gourmet cotton candy company, and I would love to chat with you today about finding your visual identity for your brand and standing out with your designs. One of the best things you can do for your brand is coming up with a cohesive look that gives everything you do the same vibe and feel. The goal is for your clients or customers to know it's you without even seeing your brand name attached to any of your marketing or branding materials. That means your website, social media, business cards, marketing collateral, merch, anything that you can think of. Here at Art of Sucra, we do that by a very firm color palette. Every design concept that we come up with is run through this color palette so everybody knows that it's us without even seeing our name. The best part about this is that you can get as creative and unique as you want, so be sure to think outside of the box. That was actually so on par with what you guys do, which I love. So Emily makes incredible and pretty cotton candy. She ships everywhere. She's based in Cleveland, Ohio. Artofsucre.com to check her out. I can actually see some cotton candy being in some of your happy boxes. I know. I was thinking that too. All right, we'll, we'll figure that out after this. But we were talking about social media. And I know a lot of business owners struggle with this. So how important is it for you as a business owner to be in a part of the visual identity on your brand of your brand on social media. 
Yeah. So it's funny. We, we talk about this a lot. Um, you want to show the humanity and the people behind the brand. We have a lot of mentors that say people buy from people, you know, they don't buy from a brand. So you want to show kind of your face um, to some degree. But with us, it's funny because our founding story is so centered around the two of us. Me but, getting dumped. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, so for so long, the narrative was always about us. It's sister founded, women owned, the breakup story. Oh. Um, but now we have this amazing team that we work with. And really, they do such incredible work that we have to start sharing that that spotlight so what we'll see in the kind of coming months actually with us is you know a lot more about the behind the scenes with our team and all the work that they do as well but i think the point really is 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 especially as a small business really showing that humanity and the people behind it i think is super important because people resonate with people right and drives more emotional connection so especially as women-owned uh business owners as well we think it's really important to show representation in that way so you know that's just another reason we we try and we try and dip our our toe into the spotlight every once in a while, but it's really not like what we're about. <laughs> we love the brand. We love, you know, our customers we really do. And we love our team. So we're going to like, kind of said, you'll see a little bit more coming, you know, coming yeah. up. <laughs> but Hannah, like you said, people, like your mentor said, people buy from people. And it is so important to know who you're giving your money to as a business. So who the yeah. business owner is oftentimes should really be a part of visual identity. It's like you said, it's not just the colors. Yeah. You know, the logo. There is so much more to visual identity. And I think we are going to get to some questions that are coming up in the chat. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. So this one is from Carrie. She said, how do you choose the products for your boxes that best represent your brand? Do you guys have a ton of products on your website? Yes. Um, so first we definitely look at the actual brand, what they stand for, who they're founded by. Like, is it, is it someone that we believe in? Um, is it a brand that we would buy ourselves? We have the very big advantage of being our own target. <laughs> um, so for us, it's very much like, would I send this to my friend? Would I send this to my mom? Who would I, you know, would they be happy to get this? So we do have like a pretty, um, we're a little strict about kind of what we include because we are so precious about, about creating, making sure that everything is in line with our brand. Um, and then we, sometimes we take a poll. Um, I usually uh, slack the entire team and ask what their thoughts are. Um, and it depends on their response because again, we, we do have a lot of uh, millennial women who work with us um, and some dudes, which is great. Um, but, but yeah, we, we love to kind of crowdsource that and see if we're kind of not uh, sure if it's it's a fit. We'll sometimes do a small run of products where we will do maybe a test order, like a you know a small quantity, see how they sell, and then we'll we'll place a larger order from there. But really, we we definitely test every product. We have to. It's important for us to feel that it will yeah. you know it's quality. It's good, <laughs> um, and and then from there we just we crowdsource. <laughs> That's awesome. It, you guys have so many things. Like I've seen it grow so much over the years from following your company. Like in one of the most recent boxes that I got as a gift, there was a hat in there. It's a (laughs) cute hat. I mean, you went from, it's crazy to see how your brand has stuck to what your brand is, but you've actually grown. So we've got another question from Maddie. It says, does being sisters help or hurt being business partners? We get this question a lot. Yeah, I think it's like (laughs) the top question we get. And then I think it used to be the, what's it like running a side business? But this is the top question we get. Um, for sure. I think, I mean, for us, it definitely helps. Um, I think it depends on your relationship with your sibling. I, I think not run a business with my, yeah, <laughs> I, I think it, I think it depends. It's the kind of thing where we recognized very early that we had to set boundaries for ourselves. So we, especially running a side business for which we did for a long time. Um, you're so tired <laughs> because you're doing this at all hours of the night. And so it's really easy to have a short temper with each other. And when it's your sister, you kind of almost don't care being nasty because it's your sister and you know, you know, um, so what we learned pretty early is, okay, we, like there's a point that where one of us has to call it. And yeah. like, we just, we both recognize, even if I don't agree that it's time to call it, she'll, and she's like, okay, it's time. We're getting it's too time. snarky. Sometimes it's just time. Yeah. You gotta leave. <laughs> and we just decide that's it. We're not going to, yep. Okay. You called it. All right. Over. We'll continue this tomorrow. And so yeah. that has been like, I think our awesome. probably biggest like kind of rule that we have followed and like, we both follow it. Yeah. And I think because of that, we're able to get through any of the normal arguments that, you know, siblings would have. Um, and the benefit is, I mean, we go on a family vacation and we get to talk business the whole time, which yeah. I think our husbands our don't husbands love, hate it. but you yeah. know, but at yeah. least we can solve some problems, you know, like on yeah. a bus or on it's, a plane or whatever. So the two things that are great is every, like, I mean, you don't trust anyone more than family, at least like, I mean, the, just it's inherent trust, right? There's no, she makes a decision. I make a decision. There's no questioning it. There's no like, 
anything sketchy. It's your sister, you know? Um, the other thing, which I think is really funny, is we will be really mad or we'll like have a fight and we'll be like, all right, well, I'll see you at mom's. It's like, <laughs> it just like doesn't matter because we're sisters because you can't. How could you ever? You can't hide. What are you going to do? You're going to be like mad at your sister forever because like you don't agree with her decision. It doesn't yeah. Know, and like I think it. honestly, more than the sister partnership, I think it's finding someone who complements the skills that you have. We are just like yeah. wildly lucky that I was a marketing strategist and she was a creative. And so literally, if we both worked at ad agencies, when we did work at ad agencies, if we worked at the same ad agency, we would literally be partnered. Like we'd be working yeah. together. Cool. And so I think that it's like the natural kind of organic nature of both of our careers kind of lined up perfectly. So for small businesses trying to find a partner, like I feel you, it's a lot easier when you have a partner. Highly recommend. But yeah, but like you have hard. to find someone that compliments, you know, what are they can do things that you can't do and likewise, right? So that's so important. Very important. Well, that was going to be one of my questions, but you just, you guys have different roles within the company. I mean, yeah. your titles are obviously different. You both founded Happy Box, but you do different things, which I love that you're both not just like trying to tackle everything all day. Yeah. yeah, we definitely have to divide and conquer. I think as we've grown, we've seen that more and more. So there are some things that, you know, I take the lead on some things that Hannah takes the lead on. We're always like, we're never, we're never in a silo. Like I never make a decision without her and vice versa, but it's, you know, if we had to, we absolutely would. Um, it's yeah. just, I think also we like value each other's opinions super like a lot. So, um, so it just kind of helps. And we always believe in collaboration with everything. And we've had to tackle some of some huge challenges that, you know, I mean, we didn't know how to start a fulfillment center. We didn't know how to do anything. I mean, really, we just started it all. Who wouldn't just randomly know that though? No, I mean, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's it's tricky. So Anthony, who is actually my business partner, said we're always tweaking our look to try to make it cleaner and better. Is there a risk to changing things too often? Yeah. Yes, there is a risk. Um, I think exactly like Emily uh, said in the one minute uh, wisdom, I think, you know, you want to be confident about your color choices for sure. You want, I, like, ideally you want a color to resonate so much with your customer that they see the color and they know it's you, right? Um, I think it really depends on the system that you want to create because you can create a system of colors that kind of work together really well. Um, and it doesn't have to, you know, it doesn't have to dilute your brand. You can really make that work for you. Um, I think, you know, for us, like we play with gradients all the time because we can't pick a color because every <laughs> color is so happy and we <laughs> just, we love gradients. So for us, we feel that we like own the gradient and we're constantly, we're constantly tweaking it, but within the same vibe. So I think if you can kind of hone in, if you want to keep tweaking it, you should, um, but like just hone in on what your vibe is and then you can kind of go from there. I think also strategically, right? Like your visual identity is so, so important, like not to devalue that at all, but there's also your, what is your tagline? What are your, what do you talk right. about? Like if you're, I think if you want to make some creative changes to your look and feel within a system, but your messaging stays consistent, then that also works. So I think it's about, it's the whole marketing kind of like picture, like in the kind of yeah. branding picture, it's not just one thing. So I think you have to look at it kind of overall. So maybe tweaking it here and there isn't the worst thing if your tagline, I mean, think about the brands that have the most iconic taglines or lines that right. you know, you know? So I think it's, it's, it's kind of the whole picture there as well. So. Awesome. Well, Shauna just sent a question that said, any okay. advice for making your side hustle a full-time job, which I know you guys have done. Yes. I think um, there comes a point in every side hustler <laughs> where you have to decide, is it, you know, are you going to take the plunge? Is it time? It, like, what's going to change in a month? What's going to change in two months, really, for you to make this happen? So for us, that was last July. <laughs> we were, yeah, drowning in work and drowning in happy box work. It was every weekend, every night. It was the most overworked we'd ever been. And it was like, it was fine. We were handling it. We were like, we could do this. We could do this. We could do this. We always had the goal of quitting the fall of 2020. That was always our, like, that's what we're going to do. And um, I looked at her <laughs> and I was like, this isn't going away. Like we're like, we are either going to lean into this and crush it and really try and really just like go like run a hundred miles an hour at this or we're not and we have to make that decision now because we can't work ourselves like this like to the bone um and it was that was one of those sister fights where she was like no we're fine <laughs> like, we're not fine like we're not and like i think we really had to lay out our goals and and to get there to figure out how many really how many hours how much like 
of your blood, sweat and tears, we're going to go into it. That was still going to be a side hustle. And for us, it was like, well, we have no, like, we're not going to stop. Like, we're not going to stop. We this. didn't want to stop. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what are we doing here? Yeah. So then that's when we like really planned and like, the exit. <laughs> yeah, plan the exit really strategically. We did it so like our companies that we worked for hopefully didn't hate us, but but they were all pretty supportive um, once we told them why we're leaving. I think so. yeah, and I think you can do some like honestly like it's math, right? It's like yes. is the time I'm spending yep. like am I wait like I don't want to say wasting your daytime, right? But like for it's us, opportunity cost. yeah, it's like the, what's the opportunity cost of you being in another job all day and making money for someone else all day when if you had a hundred percent of your brain working on your yeah. side hustle and your goal, your ultimate goal is to make it full time. How much faster would you get there if you quit? And I think yeah. some people look, some people run side hustles their whole lives and they like it that way and they want a second income like that. And I think that's totally respectable. It's really yeah. hard, but it's totally respectable. We always had the end goal of quitting. So, um, and really running this full time. So I think it really depends on your goals. And for us, very like logically, we were like, we want this much in the bank. We want, like we had our kind of plan. Not everyone's lucky enough to be able to do that. We were, we, we were able to plan our exit and it took, we decided in July, I think we finally both quit in October. So there was a time, was you know, we, we had a ramp down plan and to make sure that we were supporting our employers because we did like them. And yes. um, yeah, so I think it's, it's really a personal decision, of course, but I think keeping those things in mind, like, are you, I'll say wasting time yeah. in a full-time job that could really fuel your own business. One thing that will hopefully maybe make someone who's listening, who's contemplating this feel better. We saw an immediate return. And yeah. like, I'm telling you immediate, like the first month we were like, Oh, like we should have done this a year ago. Yeah, it was unreal. So, yeah. And I've heard that from like a lot of people who go side hustle to full time. It's again, personal choice. You have to figure out your personal finances. Cause I mean, it's silly to think that, that doesn't, yeah, it is a risk. Of course, these are startups that we're talking about, but I mean, it can really pay off and it can, you know, benefit you in the long run. I like, that's crazy to me. And I'm, I'm scared of how many people are just going to quit their jobs right now because you just <laughs> <laughs> um, do it. <laughs> so, uh, one more question and then we are going to wrap up. But Leo said, other than trends, how else do you find new ideas? Do you guys use focus groups as a business? Yeah, we actually do. Um, we do a lot of customer interviews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do a lot of customer interviews actually. So we'll reach out to our customers. Um, probably We're also really lucky to have super active, engaged customers. Yeah, which is I think really rare for a small business. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have a lot of we'll say fans that have been following us for years and they've seen the growth and they're just proud of us, which is like just lovely so that nice. people care. Um, and, and yeah, we definitely email our customers with surveys and we'll ask them, Hey, do you want to jump on a 15 minute call? We have some questions about this new offering we want to provide or a new service or a new product. And we just want to get your take. And people really are amazing. They really are open to helping. We'll always offer some sort of discount or something to just incentivize them. Um, but the answers we get, I mean, the last time we so did this, I was like, wow, people are really, really smart and thoughtful and really giving us honest answers. So always listen to your customers. Yep. Um, I think it's so important, especially when you're small, because there will be a point where you can't can't. There'll be a point, I don't say can't, but there'll be a point where it's a lot harder to do one-on-one yeah. -on -one interviews. Um, and it takes a lot of time, but it is so worth it. We've gotten some really great feedback. It's inspired a lot of change on the website. Um, it's been honestly phenomenal. So yes, customer research, very important. <laughs> it's been valuable to get yeah. that information from people. So that's really cool. I had no idea you guys did that. So that is an yeah. awesome <laughs> bit for a lot of small business owners. Guys, thank you for doing this today. Uh, we all learned so much from you guys. And if anyone who joined in the middle of this or wants to go back and listen and take notes, this episode will actually be turned into a podcast that will be out next week. So you'll be able to save all of Hannah and Ariel's thoughts forever and have them with you. <laughs> but go support Happy Box. It's Happy Box on Instagram and it's happyboxstore.com to go shop and send love and happiness to everyone <laughs> in your life. Ladies, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you both so, so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs>